Good afternoon, traders. Today's Monday, June 24th, 2013. We're coming here from RGO Futures in Chicago with uh, Jim Barrett, John Caruso, myself, Bob Habercorn, here to discuss a, uh, a slew of numbers that are coming out this week. You got durable goods, that'll be out tomorrow morning at 7.30. Expectations right now are 3.3%. That's kind of the consensus. The prior was 3.3%, so the market's, you know, right now people are looking at no change in that. And then uh, you have new home sales tomorrow. At 9 o'clock, though, tomorrow, you have consumer confidence. That comes out, uh, consensus on that's about 75. Last month, it was about it came out at 76.2. And then on Wednesday, you got real GDP. Now, that was 2.4 was the prior. The consensus is 2.4. So not expecting too much change on these numbers. Uh, you know, the market, the fundamentals and technicals have changed a little bit since last month's numbers have come out and uh, with what happened last week with the Fed and Bernanke's comments on uh, QE and the uh, bond, the asset purchasing. So this month's numbers should be interesting. I think consumer confidence will be interesting to see how that gauges with where the stocks are. Um, Jimmy, what are you looking at in the bond markets? Well, the bonds, the, week? the notes and bonds got hit harder than uh, on a percentage basis than anything with uh, uh, Bernanke's speech. Now, I read somewhere that the rise in rates uh, was the greatest over a few day period since 1962 on a percent basis. I mean, it's really been rocked. I mean, obviously the old long-term support in the notes around 240, 242 in the yield uh, uh, broke hard, and uh, very hard uh, overnight Thursday last week. I believe we reached as high as 267 this morning. Now, uh, we're backing off a little bit. Uh, the uh, kind of flea impulse uh, or more chip impulse, whatever you want to call it, uh, has maybe uh, on, a, on a very, very short-term basis run its course. The, the bonds, the notes and bonds trade a little firmer this afternoon, or actually been able to rally uh, somewhat. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's because of, maybe there's a bit of just profit taking in front of these numbers that are due. But I think the, uh, the more important thing this week uh, fundamentally speaking, uh, uh, more important than the government reports that we're you know here talking about the durable goods, GDP, uh, consumer comps, et cetera, et cetera, is the fact that nine Fed governors are scheduled to speak this week. And uh, let's face it, the, the Fed policy is what uh, uh, has pushed these markets around, or perceptions of Fed policy. Uh, three, three, three big shots actually speak on Friday. So we'll get the read from these individual uh, members of uh, the Federal Reserve Board uh, uh, about the price action of the last week or two, and, and we'll see uh, how they try to job our job on things. Well, you, you had going into it such a high expectations of this Fed, and I don't, I mean, Bernanke didn't really change course except kind of hinting towards next, you know, 2014, so... Yeah, he, it's not like he, it's he kind of threw his cards on the table. He, he showed the market his cards. Here's he kind of he put together a plan. Hey, you know, 2013 by the end of 2013 we could be scaling back. By 2014 we could we could be completely out. Now I think the market it's a little overreaction, especially in the bond market, because um, they are still in their buying. I mean, you still got the 85 billion in asset purchases on a monthly basis. I think if you want to see a housing recovery come to a screeching halt. Let interest rates continue to rise. Let the bond market continue to fall lower. Uh, I think it's an overreaction. I think bonds, you know, are going to trade higher. I think it's going to be a choppy trade, but I think they'll trade higher here in the near term. Yeah, yeah. I, I I agree. I think that the bonds, the ten-year and the thirty-year, have gotten a little overdone after the Fed. Uh, that's not to say, though, at some point yields do have to go up. Right. Uh, but I think in the short-term scheme of things, going into the numbers tomorrow. I think you're going to see people that are covering up some of those short positions, right? Mm -hmm. And going into because I mean, durable goods, home sales, consumer confidence, GDP. Um, let's not forget Thursday export sales. A lot of government numbers coming out. So, you know, well, I think they're probably covering up too in front of all these Fed governor speeches because these sure, guys sure. may try to uh, right. dampen yeah. the, the craziness uh, right. out there of the last few days, which it hasn't. You know, isn't wouldn't be unheard of for them to do that. We've right. seen it before after a Bernanke uh, conference uh, where they dampen the expectations after the fact. So, you know, and I mean, what are you looking at currencies right now? Uh, currency wise, I'm still bullish the dollar longer term over the long haul bullish dollar. Um, now we've tacked on since the FOMC uh, meeting last Wednesday, we've tacked on almost 4% in the dollar. 
um, which currencies are you know in four sessions we're not we're not supposed to see currencies fluctuate like that. Um, we put in a high 8305 today this morning. Uh, we are dropping back and think we're in the mid 82 level. Uh, longer term, like I mentioned, still bullish the dollar as the Fed start to step out of their QE program. Uh, you should see the dollar rise. Uh, however, I think in the near term, we're, we're just a touch overbought. I think we're going to see it probably drop back into the mid-81 level here in the short run. Uh, possibly we get a correction in stocks. But eventually, I do think um, uh, the, the safety, uh, it's, it's the safety trade, the U.S. dollar long. Uh, also, I think it's a long-term fundamental trade, seeing the U.S. US dollar appreciate as, as the Fed start to scale back out of the market. So. Yeah, I mean... Dollar up 4% like John touched on and a couple trading sessions is pretty crazy. I do think it probably it is a little overdone. Yeah. If you're looking for a play in the currencies, uh, something I was looking at, you know, keep an eye on the Canadian right now. That thing is getting down around some good support. And, you know, it's trading down lower based off some of what the commodity markets are doing. But it does look like it's getting oversold down here. Uh, where it's at, it's like 94.30, I think it was, as of when we did this film. So keep an eye there. There could be some... Uh, Nice moves there down at support uh, if the dollar does, in fact, pull back a little bit because it's gone up way too fast, mm -hmm. too quick in the last four sessions. I agree, yeah. But absolutely, with what you're seeing in Europe, um, the dollar right now does look to be, right. you know, the, the currency of choice at the moment. Also, I mean, we can kind of touch on just briefly, uh, you know, the Chinese downgrade in the overnight. China being downgraded, that's that's kind of what would cause stocks early on to, to fall off a ledge again. But it looks like things are recovering a little bit here. Uh, also, that probably sparks some more more buying interest in the U.S. dollar, but I think we're going to see that trade flatten out a little bit here yeah. in, near, in the near term. Well, and I usually cover the metal markets, and I can tell you right now, gold right now and silver still look like they have further downside to go. Uh, silver's now trading below 20. Gold's trading around 12.78 as of the time of this film. Um, they do look both look still look soft, and I think in the short term, what you're seeing right now is. They are going to pull back a little further. I think gold might try to find itself out around that 1250 uh, level. Silver probably low 18s right now with the way it's been trading. But you know, a lot of, there's a lot of talk out there that this is the swan song in metals. And I heard today that Barrick had laid off a third of their workforce. That Barrick up being the gold company. Um, you know, I'm of a different opinion right now. I think that what we're seeing right now is some some consolidation in the the bull market run that we've seen for the last 12 years. And I do like the opportunity here to get back in long gold at some point. It's not yet. I think it's got a little further gold, like around the 1250. But what I do see is when it does snap back, I think it's going to be pretty large. I think we will see new highs. I know you hear, well, the demand's not there, you know, but the physical side, you know, we're still hearing about demand for physicals. And by no means has anything changed from a fundamental standpoint. Uh, and the geo, if anything, the geopolitical outlook is, I think, even dicier than it was a year ago uh, worldwide. So we'll see how it trades out here. But um, I think keep an eye on metals. Don't be looking to do anything yet in them. Um, you know, we'll talk more about that in another, in another video. But I do think that the moves that are coming in the metals, I think, are going to be pretty large here, uh, probably into the, after the end of the summer. You know, seasonality, too, metals are pretty weak. So. Um, but in relation with these numbers, I don't think you're, you're going to see too much moves in the metals in relation to the GDP or the consumer confidence numbers. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything to add. Well, not about metals, about the notes and bonds. Uh, uh, I, the rally, rally should be limited. I mean, we've entered a bear market. Uh, first real resistance on a yield basis will be the old support in the notes around 240. 240, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, remember, if you have any questions uh, or like to talk more about the markets or any of these numbers out this week, please feel free to call any of us at our trade desk. Uh, we're on the web. Remember to follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Remember, futures trading does pose significant risk and is not suitable for all investors.